Hello and welcome to our pre-recorded Code Along as part of Computing Science Scotland Week 2023. Um, so very excited to be uh, along with you today. My name's Lorna, I'm part of the Microbit Educational Foundation and we're going to do some coding today with the Microbit. So you should be familiar um, if you're joining us today with what the Microbit is and what it can do. Um, but uh, if you need any recap or you want to explore other features, uh, that's the Microbit uh, website. But uh, it's got buttons, it's got a screen, it's got accelerometer, thermometer, all sorts of different bits and pieces. But it also has some data logging features, which is what we're going to use uh, today. So let's move that out of the way. So today we are going to do uh, build our own data logger and um, we're going to do some survey. Now it is based on uh, a traffic survey project so uh, that is the project instructions should you uh, want access to them and I'll share that link again at the end. Uh, we could do a traffic survey I know that this week is also the week where uh, lots of schools around the country are exploring the ways that young people travel to school um, to change uh, potential behaviour there using the car less, walking more, scooting more. Um, we're not going to do a traffic survey today. We were thinking of doing a litter survey. Uh, so last week I was chatting some primary sevens. They'd been out exploring the playground and the areas around the school and counting uh, the litter that was there so that they could share that back with the other classes, share it with the teachers, the parents, the wider community, and try and encourage people to uh, be more responsible uh, with the ways that they were disposing litter. So I thought that that was a great, uh, a great idea and we would use that today. So we're going to use uh, make code. So uh, let's just add that to the stream here. So uh, we're going to go and use make code and make code is available on makecode.microbit.org. So that's the environment that we're going to do our coding today uh, on the microbit. Um, I'm going to switch that to the screen here to make that a little bit bigger um, and we'll get rid of that. So when you come to make code, um, you're just going to use the big purple button at the top which says new project. Okay, first thing you need to do is name your project. We're going to call it litter survey uh, and that's going to start the project for us and take us into the coding environment. So for this session, there's an expectation that you've already done a bit of coding before, but just a quick recap. All the code that you're building is here on the right hand side. The selections of code that you will be using come from this middle section, this toolbox, the pick and mix of all sorts of different options that you can grab and drag and drop. And then uh, the code you uh, on the left hand side, you have the simulator where you can test out your code um, before you download it to your actual device. So let's get started. Well, the first thing in order to use the data logging features, the first thing we need to do is we need to go down to the bottom of the middle section here where there's a plus and it says extensions. And we need to click on the extension and we need to add data logging. Happily and helpfully, it's the first one on the list. Um, and that adds in, if you should spot, we've got a new uh, list item here in the middle section that gives us a whole load of new bits of code that help us use the data logging feature, which is great. So let's start coding. I already know we don't need forever. So we're gonna grab that, drop it back in the middle to tidy up. Now, if we were to do a survey, if we were to go around in the environment around us now um, and just do a quick survey of what the litter looked like, what we might do is we might get a piece of paper uh, or a whiteboard and we might draw some columns of the data we want to collect so that we can do a kind of tally chart um, as and when we spot things. And that's kind of what we need to do here on the microbit. So let's start with two columns first and you can increase that uh, and change that up as much as you like. Um, huge opportunities for some creativity, some flexibility, but let's start with uh, the two main uh, points that the primary sevens were talking to me about last week, which is plastic big problem with plastic and then the other one was metal so that covered tin cans and those foil um, 
foil wrappers and the foil uh, juice cartons and things. So inside OnStar, we want to go down to data logger and we want to find the one that says set columns. So we're gonna add that in and we're just gonna name our first column. So like we might on our whiteboard to just name the column at the top so we remember what we are collecting, we're gonna call that one plastic. And then we're gonna use the little plus next to it. And the little plus is there, perfect. We're gonna add our next column. Well, we're gonna call our next column metal, remember, because we were gonna have that for our cans and foil wrappers and, and those kind of things. So what we've already done is we've set up two columns. Now we can't see anything on the micro bit because this is all behind the scenes, um, but uh, we've set up the infrastructure there so it can start to collect some data. So now we want to add in the functionality to be able to, to add that data. So we are going to, our micro bits, remember I've got nice buttons and stuff on the front. So we are going to go to on button A. So when I press button A, I want to add to one of the columns. Well, it makes sense Let's to start with plastic, but it might be a bit tricky when we're out and about to remember what the different ones are and we might want to have a bit of reassurance. So I'm gonna to go to the basic section and I'm going to grab show LEDs. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just make the letter P, P for plastic, so that I remember that that's what that one is. So I'm gonna show that on my screen, on the front of my device. I can test that already by pressing button A and P appears, excellent. But it doesn't actually add anything at the moment. So I want to go back down to data logger. So I go to data logger and I would like to go to the one that says log data in this column and this value, okay? So we're gonna log data in the plastic column and I'm gonna just add one. So just like a tally chart, um, adding one each time. And what we need to do, one final move there is just, we need to clear the screen afterwards, otherwise the P will stay on there for a while. So we've got that bit of code that says, when I press button A, show me a P. So uh, that's P for plastic. And then log in my data that in the column plastic, add add number one, so add a one. Then clear the screen so it's all cleared out. So that's perfect, so that's what we need. And actually all we need for the other, for metal is virtually the same code. So what I could do here is right click, duplicate. Now you'll see that the duplication has come out in a funny color. And um, that's because uh, it can't have two on button A's but if I swap this down to B, it should add a color in again. But now I need to remember to change things up. So I need to clear this off first because I don't want P. I'm collecting metal. So now I want to try and design an M. There we go from metal. And I need to remember, really important, I don't want to add to the plastic column. I'd like to add to the metal column. So we've got two bits of code here. Let's just try and move them down so they're a little bit more next to each other. There we go. Is that fish? Yeah, you can see that. Um, so when I press button, e, uh, button A, shows me P and ask, adds one to my plastic column. And when I press button B, it shows me an M for metal and it adds to my metal column. So let's see what happens when we test that out on our, uh, on our simulator here. So I press button A and a P appears. I press button M and an M appears. And you might have also known that there's something appeared at the bottom here that says show data. So you can actually test that it's working by pressing that button. So you can see this is almost like I would have in a piece of paper with my column for plastic and my column for metal. And I can then see, okay, I'm gonna press A a couple of times. Oh, that's on that list. And I press B a couple of times, that's my metal. Another A, another B and that's collecting all of my data. And it just has a little kind of timestamp from when the program started. And we go back to our code. So essentially that would work. We could take that outside right now once we download it onto the device and that would go off and work. But there's one really, uh, really useful extra thing to do so that we could collect uh, 
data or different people could collect data. And that is just to kind of clear what's been stored. So if you remember um, from having done any micro -bit bits before, um, it's got memory on it. That's how the data logging works. It's going to store that stuff on there. Well, if we use it on one day and then we want to maybe plot how the litter is doing over multiple days or multiple weeks, we don't want to keep adding on to those figures. So we want to be able to clear it. We want to wipe it like we might a memory stick or um, a card for a camera. We want to be able to clear the data so we can record new stuff. So we can do that very easily. And I reckon the best way what we need to do is find a little bit of space. So let's move over here to a bit of blank space and let's use button A and B pressed together because you really won't accidentally do that. That'll be, that's a clear point. So button A and B pressed together. Let's show an image just so people know what's going to be happening. So let's show the big cross to say, yep, getting rid of the data. So people know that that's what's happened. Um, and then we just go down to data logger and we are looking for delete log, which is perfect. So that will clear, uh, clear the log of data. Now, if we had switched off our device completely and restarted it, then the code in on start would work, but we might be, we might want to just be able to clear our log to carry on without completely restarting. So it would be good practice if we also reset up our columns, do no harm at all. So I've just duplicated that, I'm gonna move it across and I'm just gonna add it there. So when I press A and B together, big cross to show me that it's going to delete data um, it's going to delete the log it's going to set the columns back to plastic and metal so that I could carry on with a new fresh set of data and just so I know it's definitely done that what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here one of the big ticks um, so that I get some sort of indication that yeah that's been reset and it's ready to go for some new data so what I could do is I can go back over to my simulator here. Now that I've got something that says button A and B, I get a button A and B here. So I can give that a press, I get a cross and then a tick. So I know that that's actually worked. And that's all the code that we need. So it's very hard actually uh, at the moment to have all of that code uh, on the screen. I wonder, can I make that any bigger? Not much bigger. Um, so that's all our code. So quick recap. At the start, on start, we're going to set our columns. So we're setting our columns for recording our data. And we have a column for plastic and we have a column for metal. And then we've got two big bits of functionality. So we want to record our data. So pressing button A gives us a P for plastic and adds one into the plastic column and then clears the screen so we know it's ready to record some more data. Pressing button B shows a big M, which is for metal and it adds one to the metal column. And again, if we just scroll down very slightly, um, it will clear the screen afterwards so we know we're ready to record some more data. And then for some good housekeeping, in case we want to start afresh because we've lost track or we're recording a different part of the playground or a different part of their local environment, if we press buttons A and B together, then uh, it will show a cross to say it's deleting the data. It will delete the data, reset those columns so they're ready for more data and give you a tick to say you're ready to go. So that is how the code works. And then what you can do, let me see if I can change around. I'm just going to get rid of me for a second. So then what you can do is you can then just download your code um, to the uh, to your device. So you plug your device in with a USB drive. Um, so I'm just going to uh, plug my device in now. There we go. I'm going to press the download button right at the bottom, big purple download button. Um, and it's going to send the code down there. If you're using uh, any sort of other um, way of downloading, so perhaps you're using iPads or whatever, you can get all of the data on how best to, all of the advice on how best to do that, the instructions if you're not sure uh, from the Microbit website. So again, you can go to Microbit. And um, 
now we have our data on our micro bits. So uh, let me swap around. So we don't need that for a moment. Um, and we're going to, let's remove that. We'll go back here. So here's my, here's my micro bit. I've got my code downloaded. I can press button A, I'm getting a P. Press button uh, M. And I'm gonna press this a few times um, to collect some data. And then I'm gonna show you how we can pull that data off our device and what we can do. And in the meantime, while we are doing that, um, just a quick shout out that if you are joining us today and you're using it, that uh, this is part of Computer Science Week Scotland. Um, so you can tweet us on CS Scott 23, um, uh, but you can also uh, tweet us on DigiLearn Scott um, and Microbit underscore edu. So we love hearing from you uh, and what you're up to in terms of social. Um, I'm sure Louise will recap those links again um, at the end. And I did promise just at the end, I would also show you uh, the, um, the link back to the project should you want to have that. So when it comes time to check our uh, to check the code that we've collected. Now, let me just make sure I press it a few more times so that there's some interesting code on there. I think I've only pressed it a couple of times. So give me a second. Okay, lots of code, lots of uh, results hopefully on there. What we do is you plug your micro bit back into your computer. Um, so I'm just plugging in the USB just now. Um, brilliant. And uh, let me just find the screen to share there. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing that screen and I am going to find the right screen to share. So I am looking for, let me just find it. It just takes a second. My goodness, there's too many screens. Oh, it's all web browsers that I'm finding. I don't want that. I want oh, I want this. That's what I want. I want a window. So I want to share here. So I have plugged into my device. My micro bit has shown up here on the left hand side. And when I click on it, I can see inside my micro bit. And the important one here is the one that says my data. So if I double click on my data, um, helpfully, that has now opened in a different window. Um, so I need to, that wasn't very helpful to her at all, was it? So we'll stop sharing that and we'll uh, reshare and uh, find that window, which is the microbit data log, which is in a Chrome browser. There we go. And that would have opened up in here seamlessly if you had done it. Let me get rid of the project link now. We don't need that on the screen. Um, there we go. And this is all my data in real time. So I've got all the plastics, the metals, you can see there's obviously a bit of a pattern to where I was pressing the button and that's all my data. So I could take that and I could put it in a spreadsheet or however else um, I might like to play around with that data. But there's also this little button here, which lots of people don't spot called visual preview. So I'm able to have a look and I'm able to have a look at my data. So particularly interesting if you're doing things like measuring uh, temperature or uh, light levels, that kind of stuff, you will be able to see the change in the variation. So, and you can click on them. So I could just view the, the data for metal or I could swap and just view the data for plastic if I want. Um, obviously this is a survey, the looking at the data like that isn't as exciting as if it was trending temperature, for example, over time. But I just wanted to show you that because if you do go on to use the data logger again, um, that's a really useful uh, resource. Otherwise you've got all of this data, which you can take pop it in a spreadsheet and then start to identify, okay, we have a real issue here with metal. Um, so there's lots of tin cans strewn around um, and we'd like to share that with our community. So um, I am going to jump over here. 
So it's a little bit different uh, when we're doing a pre-recorded session because there is no opportunity to see if there's any questions, how everybody's doing. I hope that's made sense. You're very welcome to pause and stop any point, um, but that's perhaps your first opportunity to explore the great data logging features of the BBC Microbit. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for helping celebrate computing science. Uh, week in Scotland um, and I hope you're having fun and enjoying all the other activities that are on offer uh, through the amazing Did You Learn Scott? Thank you!